These are box switches, and box switches were first announced around March 2017. Today, they are highly recommended for many enthusiasts looking for switches for their builds today. Let's dive into how these switches work and why they're different from the traditional MX design that Cherry patented back in 1983. Opening the switch is pretty easy, lift the two sides and separate the housings. Bada bing, bada bam, come on and slam. Please note that there are no PCB mount box switches. Hopefully those come out in the future. So what makes the box switches unique? While the shape of the stem is certainly unique, surrounding the iconic cross stem is a square which many believe is where the box name comes from. That's actually there to help with keycap stability and reducing a wobble, but not where the name comes from. Where the box name actually comes from is this small compartment the contact leaf is stored within the switch. This switch gives some dust and water protection, and the dust and water protection is rated at IP56. Compared to traditional Cherry MX style switches in the past, the box switch has another feature that makes it unique. The drain hole at the bottom allows for the switch to eject any dust that may accumulate, and this probably helps with the IP56 rating. The electrical components are housed in the inner box, but how does that interact with the sliders? It interacts with the sliders with a separate plastic nub. The slider moves down, the slider makes contact with the plastic nub, and the plastic nub pushes the leaf. To fit the leaf in the box, the leaf sits sideways compared to the normal vertical position of leafs in standard MX switches. In future videos, I'll go over possible mods for these internals, possible issues, and how they can feel. Box switches come in standard linear, tactile, and clicky variants, except the clicky switches aren't your traditional click jacket clickies. If you watch episode 1, I cover the differences between the two types of MX clicky switches, those with click jackets and those with click bars. All box clicky switches feature click bars, and none of them use click jackets. These switches aren't the most conducive to common mods the community is used to. This is by far the biggest weakness of the box switches. For example, part of the stem is above the housing when in the rest position, meaning if you loop too high up, you risk having gunk stick to the stem and bringing it down into the housing. Next is the spring. It's not the standard MX spring size, so you're not going to be able to swap springs unless you're swapping with another box switch. I hear Mike from Novel Keys is working with a manufacturer on manufacturing custom spring weights for people who would like to spring swap. These are practically the simple basics of how box switches work and some aspects about them. Expect to see some more episodes coming up about box switches and the varying types like the Box Royals or Hako switches. Thank you for watching.